Hello and welcome to uh, lecture five in Engineering Mathematics 2. Today we are going to talk about uh, double and triple integrals. Well, uh, mostly we are going to work with double integrals because triple integrals are optional. So if you if you need the, 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 this um, uh, for your engineering classes, then then just watch the video. If if, if you don't need it, well, just just, just skip it. So here is the plan uh, of today's lecture. Uh, first, we are going to talk about, well, some motivation and some application uh, to introduce double integrals. Well, uh, first of all, recall the definition of a definite integral. Right? So here is the definition that uh, you must be familiar from um, mathematics one. Right? So th this is the integral from a to b of a function f of x dx. And uh, th th this is what it looks, um, how it looks um, on um, um, on a plot, right? So if, say, we have some point A, some point B in on the x-axis, and this is y, and let's say that th this is going to be the function graph. Right, so what we do here, we split the interval from A to B uh, into N smaller intervals. Mm. Okay, so this is going to be delta X. Well, strictly speaking, it should be delta X case here. Delta X case. Then somewhere here, we have this point X star whatever then we take the value of the function at that point so it is going to be f of x star k right and then uh, well notice that what is here is is really the area of this rectangle whose width is delta x k and whose height is f of x star k and essentially um, you know, if we um, if we do it for all, all all our points of the so-called partition of the interval from A to B, then what we get is the area of uh, total area of the these rectangles. Oops, sorry. Well, and of course, you know, if um, we take the limit as the size of the partition uh, approaches zero, then we get kind of uh, thinner and thinner rectangles. And the limit is, is essentially going to be the area, you know, under the, the graph of the function. So if this is A, this is B, this is our function, then the limit is going to be the area under the graph of the function. Well, if, of course, the uh, function is positive. So if the function is not positive, then we are going to take signed area, so parts uh, where the function is positive in, um, are going to be taken with the positive sign, and areas where the function is negative are going to be taken with the negative sign. Right. So here is the schematic, um, and basically the, this idea uh, can be extended to two or more variables in a kind of a more or less straightforward manner. Now, uh, the setup here is that if we have a function of two variables, f of x, y, and in, in the plane x, y, we have some, some region d, two-dimensional region, then we can kind of uh, compute the integral of uh, our function f of x, y. Well, the ddsp p, the ddsp p here is really, uh, well, p is just x, y. So th th this is really f of x, y. Um, we can compute the integral, um, double integral of a function of two variables over um, an area or over a region in, in, in the plane. Right, so uh, here is what it looks like. So if the function's graph is um, lies above the x, y axis, so which means that the, the f of x, y is positive. So here in, in this picture, f of x, y is positive for x, y in the given uh, region D, right? So then um, 
the geometric meaning is that the double integral is the volume um, under the graph of the function in the 3D space. Right? So, uh, and th this is going to be naturally the first uh, application of our double integrals is that it is going to be the volume under a surface. Right? So, um, if um, our function is positive, then um, we can uh, use it to compute the volume under a surface. I don't know. As an example of the, this, so imagine that we have a sphere uh, in uh, in the xy z axis x y z axis. So the, the sphere is x square plus y square plus z square is one, right? So maybe in the, instead of looking at the whole sphere, let's just look at the first octant, right? So at the part where x y and z are all non-negative, right? So the volume of the whole sphere is going to be, of course, eight times um, uh, times the volume of that octant, and the, the, the volume of the octant. So here, uh, you know, uh, we will take the integral over like the, this region, um, which is a quarter of a circle. So this is going to be our region. And the function that we are integra integrating comes from the, this equation, right? So we we will integrate uh, of the region function that comes from solving for, for z. And this is going to be 1 minus x square minus z square, sorry, y square d a. Right? So, for example, we can use it to, to find, to compute the volume of a sphere. I mean, of course, we know the, the answer because Archimedes computed that for us 2,000 years ago. But, well, but by, by the way, essentially, you know, when Archimedes came up with a formula for the volume of a sphere, he invented integration. So, I mean, it's not exactly double integral, it is some some other trick, but essentially he invented integration uh, about 2,300 years ago to compute the volume of a sphere. But um, you, you, you can kind of do it in a slightly different way by uh, computing it like, like this, like a double integral. Okay, um, so sometimes it, it looks a bit strange, right? So, but sometimes if we integrate the constant one, then of course we still get the volume. But if we integrate the constant one, then essentially we just get the area of the of the region D. I mean, of course, in order to compute areas, we can just use single integrals. But sometimes, and it is just kind of more convenient to to use double integrals. It looks surprising and counterintuitive, but but it is. Okay, uh, so another thing is that um, another application is total charge of a lamina. So what's a lamina? So lamina is, is kind of a thin plate, right? Uh, and in, imagine that, you know, it is charged electrically and the charge <laughs> depends on, on the point. So at, at, at this point, maybe the, the charge is, is kind of, is, is positive. At, at, at this point, the, the charge is negative, and maybe at some points the charge is bigger than at, at some other point. So then, uh, if such a charge is distributed over uh, the the whole lamina and it has some some density, um, then uh, the total charge is going to be just the double integral of the density over a whole lamina. And again, so the the example with the lamina looks a, a little bit um, probably artificial but of course you can use triple integrals to compute uh, total charges of 3d bodies you know in exactly the, the, the same way it's just that triple integrals are, are probably harder to understand so which is why um triple integrals are an optional topic to today right so i guess some of you will probably need triple integrals so you will have to to study them later but the idea is similar conceptually it's just that Triple integrals are harder to, to compute. Okay, uh, or again, so again, uh, if we have a lamina, uh, so and instead of a charge, we have a uh, density per unit area, right? So then, and the, the, this local density, it depends on the point, then the total mass is going to be the integral of the density function over the whole, uh, the whole area. 
Okay. And it is also possible to compute moments about the x-axis and the y-axis. I'm not going to tell you what moments are. So it, it's it's physics. So you probably should know. If not, it, it's not very important because uh, the message that I am communicating is that you can also compute the coordinates of the center of the mass of the lamina, right? So it, so the center of the mass, basically it means the following thing. It means that um, if you have the, the, this kind of lamina and uh, if you wanted to balance it on, on a stake, then if you you, you, you need to, to, uh, to put it on, on the stake such that the, the stake is exactly at the center of the mass. So that, that's the, the special point that is going to balance the gravitational force. So the um, uh, lemon is, is not going to, to trip on uh, one side and, and fall down. <laughs> and um, basically the, the center of the mass is the point at which the gravitational force is, is applied. Okay, and that's it for the first part. So please uh, pause the lecture and you, you can do the quiz.